Good morning, YouTube. Wow. Okay, so that last video, I had no idea so many people were into plate reverbs or IKEA. I didn't know there's a hundred thousand people in the world that know what a plate reverb is. But that was amazing, and thank you. If you're one of the many new subscribers, welcome to the channel. If you're one of the longtime subscribers, thanks for tuning in. I think the thing that thrilled me the most about the last video, besides the view count, was the really nice comments that people left. There was not much snark, and there were a lot of really good questions and really cool comments, and I tried to answer as many of them as I can. And thank you for that. Okay, so let's talk. At the end of the last video, we had a plate reverb that was working, but it had a number of problems. And in this video, what I'm going to try to do is solve as many of those problems as I can and improve the sound of that plate reverb as much as possible. Okay, let's do this. So here we have the plate. It's actually pretty rigid. It will hold itself upright, and that is because if you look at the edges here, you see that it's actually folded. These folds actually give it a lot of strength and rigidity, but we don't want that. We actually want this thing to resonate freely. So what I'm going to do is use that angle grinder and slice these edges off. It'll make the plate slightly smaller, but I think it will make the plate a lot more resonant. After quite a lot of cutting and grinding and sanding, we have this. This beautiful sheet of steel, look at how floppy it is now. And since removing the paint, it's actually gone down in thickness quite a bit. This used to be a millimeter thick, and once I sanded all the paint down, we're now down to about 0.6 millimeter. And that thinness really shows in the sound. Check this out. That sounds really, really much better than before. And I think it just looks gorgeous too. So the next step is to get this thing mounted in the cage. As quite a few commenters recommended, I'm going to turn the table on its side and hang the plate vertically. I think doing so is gonna help the plate resonate better and it's gonna take up a lot less floor space. What we have here is a box of springs. I got it for eight bucks from the hardware store. We're gonna use these to hang up this plate. And by the way, the plate is not galvanized or coated in anything, so it's gonna start to rust. And I'm actually looking forward to that because I think it might sound interesting when it starts to rust. And if I don't like the sound, well, I can get another plate from Ikea for 16 bucks. Cool. And I found that one spring is usually not enough, so I've been using two. And we can get these springs interleaved. And we'll push them together. Now you got one much stiffer spring. And for a screw, and we're gonna run it through. That's a tight fit, but that is actually a good thing, because that means these things aren't gonna rattle around. And now it is time to do a test fitting. There it is. Let me show you a closer look here. So we've got the same IKEA plate sanded down and it's mounted up in the frame with some springs. As you can see there. Another one here. And up here we're using wing nuts to tension that plate and make sure that it's under a good amount of tension. Same thing on the bottom side. And best part of all for this whole thing is check out how good this sounds. Yeah, all of those high frequencies are back. I think the, the corners of the previous 
version of this. And the fact that there was all that paint, that thick powder coated paint that they put on for it to be hard wearing, all of that was preventing the plate from resonating at the higher frequencies. And if you look around the back here, this middle section is here and I'm gonna mount the speaker on some sort of bracket here and have it just touching the back of the plate. I can't wait to put some sounds through this so we can hear what it sounds like. Good news, everybody. Okay, so in the last video, I incorrectly assumed that there was going to be impedance matching problems. The telltale sign of an impedance matching problem is that the low frequencies are not there. If you have an impedance matching problem, 100 hertz, 150 hertz, maybe 200 hertz and below start to get filtered out and you end up with a thin and tinny kind of sound. But it occurred to me that my plate doesn't have that problem. And that made me wonder if the audio interface actually does have a really high impedance input. And I happen to be in sort of a privileged position because I've been working in this industry a long time and I have a lot of friends in high places. So I wrote an email to the product managers at Focusrite that are in charge of the audio interface line. And they checked with engineering and the input impedance of the instrument inputs on that interface are one mega ohm which is perfect. It is exactly what we need for piezo pickups, which is also a relief because it means I don't have to build anything. Speaking of not having to build anything, I also solved the ground hum issue with a cable, a wire. I was thinking of building some sort of DI box or isolation transformer or all sorts of other complicated things. But before I did that, I just wanted to ground the plate to a common ground and make sure that that's not the problem. And lo and behold, problem solved. So turns out all you have to do is ground the plate to the same common ground source that the audio interface is hooked up to and you will not have any hum problems at all. I love low tech solutions. Small transducer, medium sized transducer, and a large one here. I've done a bit of testing on all three of these. I thought this would be the best option. This is capable of producing lower frequencies and is louder, which you'd think is good, but it turns out when you run this into a plate reverb, it ends up with a pretty muddy sound with lots of low frequencies, and it actually didn't produce the best sound. The small one had the opposite problem, where this isn't capable of generating enough low frequency sound, so you end up with sort of a thin, mid-rangey, tinny sort of sound that also wasn't very good. So it turns out that the middle option, this guy, the one that we used in the prototype, is actually the best sounding of the three. So what I need to do now is figure out how to mount this so that I can get it right up against the plate and have it firmly mounted to the frame. So what I have here is a piece of MDF. I don't particularly love MDF. As a woodworker, I think it's kind of a, it's not really a wood, it's a wood product. But for engineering purposes, it's actually great. And I say that because it is very flat and you can mill it, you can cut it, and it will not warp or bend as much as natural woods. Like natural wood is, is beautiful and I love working with it on various types of projects, but moisture and humidity do cause it to warp, which we don't want in some sort of precise engineering application. So I wanted to take a minute and talk about some of the failures that I've had. Looking at this time lapse, you might think that this thing took half an hour and it came out perfect, but 
The truth is I actually had to go through quite a few different iterations of this thing before I got it. There's more that I threw out before I thought to film all this. I think it's kind of important to take a minute and talk about this. These are all of the different things that didn't make it into the beautiful finished final product that you see here. In some cases, I drilled the hole and it was too small and I tried to open it up with a screwdriver just to pry it open and I broke the MDF. In other cases, I just drilled it off center and this didn't work and it was too big. In some cases, I got it almost right, except that I didn't think to make this edge lower so that I can actually get a screw in another failed attempt. This one was almost right, except when I started drilling that deep hole, the MDF started splintering and that wasn't gonna work. And this is the one that you saw at the end that actually did work. It's a little bit janky, but this one actually worked and I could get the transducer mounted in here and get a screw in. I did all of this just to prove that it can be done with basic hand tools. In the end, what I did was take whatever I'd learned here and I dumped everything into Fusion 360 and built 3D models of everything. And I put all of this into the CNC machine. That's why you see like a perfect cut here and this thing is just perfect. But it took a lot of iterations to get to this. And I don't want anybody watching this thinking, oh, I can just sit here and 30 minutes later have a perfect part. No, it takes a little bit of work to get here. Hardware is not easy. It's hard. And sometimes you have to struggle with it for a long time and face a lot of headaches and failed prototypes before you find a solution that really works. But I tell you what, when you find that solution, it feels really good. And to know that you've done that with your own hands and your own ingenuity, that's a really great feeling. If you're a musician, you probably know that feeling when you create something and you listen to it the next day and it just sounds good. Well, I get that from doing this, and I think you can too. I hope that people watching this channel will be inspired to go out and think about problems, break it down into small sections, and then solve those problems and come up with cool solutions. I think that's a really exciting and empowering thing. All right, so here we've got the middle plate. This is the one that goes in the midsection of the table. And here's the transducer, screw through our hole and tighten it down. Now the nice thing about having a slot here is that this is actually adjustable. You can pull it back if you are transporting it and move it to the side like this, tighten it down. And when you need to deploy it, you can do that here. In fact, you should be able to use some, some sticky tape or something else to mount the amp actually on the back of the plate. So everything is locked in one place and you just take your one cable, plug it into your computer and you should be good to go. So here we've got the plate. It's hooked up to the computer exactly the same way as before. I'm using even the same cables and the same settings on the recorder, which is here so that everything is exactly the same and we have an apples to apples comparison between that and the original plate. So let's fire up Addictive Drums 2 and let's take a listen. Okay, let's turn the plate up. Now that's a lot of reverb, but you can really hear that high frequency sort of sparkle is all back now. Whereas before it sounded kind of dull. Now it sounds uh, quite crispy. Now if we go back to the, to the plate here, I actually don't have a good solution yet for dampening the plate. I have the same scarf as before and what we can do is just sort of lean the scarf up against the plate hear it you can hear it cut down the reverb time a bit take it away back now, to my ears that sounds much much better okay so we're back in omnisphere here Sounds much more plate-like. If 
Sounds like a room. Automate the send amount and play with it. A bit crushed synthy sound. Now if you push this thing really hard, you can actually get the amp on the plate to start overdriving, which in itself gives you kind of an interesting sound. Check this out. Okay, let's do one more. folks so there you have it the ikea plate reverb hack version 2 this thing sounds great i really like it now i think the first version had some problems we went through the problems one by one and solved the issues i'm capturing all the impulses of this plate and i'm going to put all of these online for free so you can download them and use them as you will i'd like to thank my friends at Focusrite for building a fantastic audio interface and i would like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you've been inspired and uh, you'll go off and create something of your own. And come back and share it with us too. Let us know how it goes. If you've liked this video, please smash that like button. If you've liked it a lot, consider subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date on my latest creations. And I'll see you in the next one.